Let's remake Tori Moi's Ordinary Pleasure. Uh, we're gonna try to use this plaster container as a little drum because why not? I've been wanting to try to use different sounds, just little items around the house and stuff. Just as a way to get kind of unique, you know, something you don't hear very often. All right, we're gonna loop four bars, two bars even, and we're just gonna go and take do some takes. Whew, that was strange. I don't even know if it's gonna work, but it's kind of fun. I mean, there's some interesting um, rhythms you can get on that with the finger roll. You know, a little finger roll was cool. So now we're just gonna go through and a lot of takes. We're gonna try to find something good, hopefully. So I'm going through and selecting different parts of the take that I like. The way I do it is green, I like. Blue is like something different than what I was really going for, but it's still good. And then whatever the original color is just means nothing special. I think that one seems the most like what we're going for. I am completely unsure if I can make this sound good or not, but I, I am curious to try. Let's hear the original. So it's kind of hollow sounding. You ever just have no idea what you're doing? Because that's how I feel right now. Let me try something with a gate here. And still doesn't sound good. What should I do? I'm thinking this isn't gonna work, honestly. Let's get a quick conga in here too. What are the different sounds they have here? So they have like open, open, kind of a muted and like a slap. All right, I'm just gonna draw it in initiate time lapse. I don't have a very calm. My dog's going ham upstairs. I'm feeling like I need to take a deep breath for a second. Like, I, there's no way I'm gonna just recreate this conga. There's no way I'm gonna recreate it hit for hit or whatever. What I have sounds fine. I'm gonna see if I can mix it with the other thing that I made with the uh, that container. I like it has like a, a little high-end sizzle. It doesn't make it sound too clean and too pristine. You know, it's got a little bit of character to it, which I like. I'm gonna glue the whole thing together a little bit. That spice right there, the difference. I'm gonna turn this down. And then the final thing is it definitely has reverb. We're gonna play around a little bit until we find something that sounds good and kind of like that. to go with it. All right, and then just to top it off, we're gonna go to the groove section here and we are gonna pick a swing. I like swing 16th 54. I tend to like that. It's subtle, but it just adds like a human, it humanizes it a little bit. Add some groove. Then we're gonna select all these except for the slap. because so we want that to be a hard hit. We're gonna go to velocity range here and we're gonna pull it down a little bit. This is gonna help us humanize everything by randomizing how loud and soft the different hits are. All right, that sounds a lot like it. This is the original conga. So I put that in with MIDI and then I put a little redux on it, add a little bit of dirt. Then I added in the thing that I recorded with the bucket, my take on it. That guy just has a little compression and EQ on it. And then Redux on the whole group. Dirty up even more. Dock is set, add some distortion, glue it together. Hybrid reverb. It's a spring reverb. Makes it sound a little wet almost, like water drops. And then in early reflections is room reverb, just to bring, put it in a space. 
I'll probably turn that down a little bit. That sounds good. I like that. So, let's put some bass on here, huh? I need to remember that, like, I just need to basically relax. I'm definitely not used to filming myself doing this. It definitely has filter automation on it, so it goes like wow, wow, wow. I actually made something that I think would fit well before for a different song that I made. Wah bass. So I'm gonna play along a little bit with this. I'll take just the f one bar at a time. I really like this bass line. I'm a little worried because this is pretty fast. Come on, that easy. Well, that was easier than I thought. I think that sounds really good. I really like the congas actually, and I think I think that the congas have a lot of character and they sound human enough that you don't think about the fact that they're not human. And the bass line was a lot easier than I thought. It's really funky, which I like. Turns out I was solidly clipping for a decent amount of that bass line, and honestly, I'm gonna give an F. I'm gonna try putting it into beats mode here. Take this little arrow, put it straight, and I'm gonna pull this thing down. This is gonna make each note shorter that I played. I think that makes it sound a little bit cleaner, because I'm not great at playing bass. I'm not really great at playing any instrument, but I know how to feather it to make things sound better, and that is enough for me. And let me listen to the original bass, because I think that that filter automation is doing something that's in time with the song. <sighs> There's something strange going on there. See if you can listen to, like this, I'm gonna grab an auto filter and see if maybe I can get that just out of the bass or if there's like a wah guitar doing it. We'll see. It just adds this um, uh, kind of moving, shifting element to it and I think with the four and the floor kick drum, it'll like be in time with that and it'll be something to behold. And you know what? Because I'm crazy, I'm just gonna offset it a little bit. I think it'll be a little bit late compared to the kick, and that sort of thing uh, gets my goat, if you know what I'm saying. But I do think there's still something else in the background here that we have to work on this. The weird thing is, it's not even in time. Yeah, so we're gonna do this weird background sound thing now. Ugh. This is probably with a pick. By the way, everyone's talking about their favorite chords. I don't know if you guys have been seeing that uh, on Instagram and whatnot. My favorite chord, I think, I don't care where you put it. All right, so if I was not doing this, I would probably just make a song from that idea I just had. sounds like it starts on the upbeat and then eventually it goes off of the upbeat and moves into like the downbeat it moves like out of time and then comes back into time on the downbeat and I think it's playing like I don't know I think it's playing this note I'm gonna get a wah preset that they have on here and I really don't want to spend too much time on this so I think this is something that the bass is doing and I I'm not sure how to figure it out and I don't really feel like figuring it out. I just kind of want to do it with this guitar and something have something that is effectually similar. That was it.
it. It's really hard to do on purpose. I'm gonna try to just not play it in and see if I could just maneuver it in via shifting the notes around. All right, so it actually might switch. Like it just goes upbeat for the first half and downbeat for the second half. I really couldn't figure that out. That was tough. Uh, if anyone else has an idea of how he got that weird sound, I would love to know. But we're gonna move on. We're gonna get a little drum sound in here. Bing, bang, boom. Should I do drums or keys? All right, let's do the keys. Yeah, let's do the keys. It'll be fun. We're gonna try the upright piano. It's a similar sound. We'll dial it in after we figure out the notes. It's definitely like a reverbed piano compression after the reverb to glue it all together. Let's figure out these uh, chords. I think that's the first one. I think that's it. All right, let's listen to how that sounds. put some reverb on it. We'll try the same early reflection reverb that we put on the congas just to keep things in the same area. I think it, it might just be fully wet reverb. Okay, I kind of like this. The compressor with a fast release to the initial hit, it clamps down on it and you can't hear the initial hit as much and then it opens up and lets the tail end of the notes ring through, which is similar to in the original song. All right, I think that there's something else going on here. I think that the original piano is on the left side and it's sending to a reverb that's stereo. So you hear the piano hits on the left and the reverb is on the left and the right together. So we're gonna create an audio track here and we're gonna set the input to that piano that we have and we're gonna bring the reverb and the compressor over here. This is gonna be in the center. That's what just the reverb sounds like. The piano. We're gonna bring the piano down, reverb up. I'm not sure if those are the right notes or not. They're similar, but it's like, I like the Tori Moi ones better. They definitely fit pretty well. We're gonna go with that. We'll give it a shot. And the last step is the drums. I don't even know, what do the drums sound like here? Well, kick snare and two hi-hat sounds, it sounds like. Woo, got in the zone there, that was good. When you look at the grid here, it's a little bit late. It comes back, gets back on time, a little bit late. That is exactly what we want. That's just what gives you that groove, the human feel, and not like, a, you know, it doesn't sound too robotic. We call that pocket, baby. All right, let's add the snare in. I think that snare wants a little bit of more high end on it, so I'm going to distort it a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the piano here, and I'm gonna side chain it to the kick, take a little bit more uh, groove to it. I'm gonna keep it subtle. All right, so I pull it back too high and then just to where you don't notice it anymore, but it's still there. You wanna keep it subtle, but it definitely has an overall effect on the groove. So the next, the high hats go like and they have like a phaser on them, interestingly. So it sounds like it's kind of a jangly hat and a less jangly, tighter hat. Let's try putting the phaser on now while we're here. The one is doing a consistent pattern, the lower one, and the higher hi-hat is doing like a, a different pattern. So I think the consistent hi-hat pattern sounds like this. I'm just gonna draw this in. I'm having a hard time getting the rhythm. I think that's all the drums. Let's listen to what I have. Whew. All right. 
it's so hard to compare something like this to the original. It's like, it's never going to be as good as the original. The original is great because it's just a singular thing and something trying to be like it will never be as good as the thing it's trying to be like. It's just not going to happen. But that said, I think that things went really smoothly with this. I really am happy with the way the congas turned out because going into it, that was my biggest worry was getting realistic sounding congas and having character like they do in the song and trying to, you know, choose all the little hits and stuff, put them in the right place. The bass line came really easily, which was cool. Like bass line like that, sometimes I'll have to, you know, do freaking 50 takes or whatever to get it right. But I did this one like three takes and I, I nailed it. So that was a nice surprise. The chords, I'm not, the chords are the things that I'm least happy about, I would say. I'm not sure if they're really the right notes that I pulled out of those chords. AKA, I'm not sure if they're really the right chords that I used. I tried my best with my ear. I think I put a little too much pressure on myself to try to sound like the song as much as possible. But I'd rather do it in a way where I use the song as inspiration and like follow the song's lead, but also can put my own little touches on it or whatever. So let me know if there's any songs you want me to try my hand at, or if you have any suggestions, it's always good to hear. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.